three, two, one. Thank you so much for hanging out with us right here on WKYC's Facebook page. I'm meteorologist Mark Lesman. A couple little weather updates. Not only do I want to talk about some severe storms here locally, but also we're going to recap Hurricane Dorian and what's going on there. I want to take you right on in though to the eastern edge. This is the fringe of Carroll County, Ohio. This is just southeast of east in parts of Carroll County. You'll notice a severe thunderstorm warning has been issued. Lots of lightning, a ton of rain in there as well. But a couple little interesting features that I want to point out to you. You'll notice a little notch here that we're tracking just southeast of east. And with that, there is some very minor rotation that we're seeing on radar as well. So something that we're keeping a very close eye on. Again, that severe thunderstorm warning going to be in effect for the next half an hour until about 745 and it'll quickly cross over the Carroll Columbiana state or a county line here real soon. But again, something that I just wanted you to be heads, just be aware of if you're joining me down around parts of eastern Carroll County. I want to focus in on it just for a moment and show you the rotation that I'm talking about. We can actually use what are called base radial velocities and that helps us kind of dig into a storm and see what the heck is going on inside that storm. And again, no surprise here whatsoever. You'll notice that the National Weather Service just issued a tornado warning for that storm. And again, no surprise whatsoever. That was the reason why I wanted to jump on Facebook Live first and give you an idea on this. This storm system, by the way, moving toward the east. Let me see what the National Weather Service has to say about this. It's moving toward the east here at about 15 miles per hour. So it's a slow moving thunderstorm, but it's that little notch. I'm gonna circle it one more time for you so that you can have a better idea on what exactly we're talking about. It's just north of Fox, and it's this little notch here that we're referring to that is moving toward the northeast, as we mentioned, at about 15 miles per hour. So it's certainly taken its time and as we project this out, moving at 15 miles per hour toward the northeast, the approximate times of arrival, that's what I want to show you when this potential tornado could move out of the Carroll County area and then into Columbiana County. If you're joining me from, say, Highland Town, this is a great time to get to your safe spot. Again, what we're seeing on here is what's called a hook echo signature. And you'll notice that little hook just around Summitville and more so here over toward Fox and Ohio State Route 39 heading in the direction of Salineville. So again, this is moving very slowly, lumbering along at only about 15 miles per hour. You're certainly hearing the tornado sirens if you're joining me from parts of Carroll County. Again, this is the eastern edge of the county line right now. And again, this will move into Highland Town at about 745 this evening, and it's going to be a loud storm as it moves in. There's a lot of lightning. There's also a lot of thunder with this as well. Thank goodness I think that it'll cross over the county line within, say, the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. And at that point, it'll be out of our immediate viewing area, but certainly something that we'll be watching for uh, as we look at the system, let me dig back into this and show you what I was referring to before the National Weather Service uh, issued that tornado warning. Again, a great call there because we were noticing when we were looking at that storm earlier, some rotation contained within that. And it certainly uh, merited for the National Weather Service to uh, to issue that warning. So here's what I'm seeing as a meteorologist. Typically what we look for is green next to red and green next to red just indicating that there's some rotation and you can see it right here, right around say Salineville. And so this is on the eastern fringes of Carroll County now moving into Columbiana County. And you can see that the National Weather Service has just now updated that to include a severe thunderstorm warning for Columbiana County. We'll get more information on that in just a moment. But again, here's where that rotation would be. And keep in mind that what I'm using here is the Cleveland radar. And so the Cleveland radar is actually located at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. It's it's really, really far away from Carroll County. So what we're seeing is what's going on 
way high up in the storm, so we're not really getting a good analysis on what's going on further toward the base of the storm. And to do that, we'll have to kind of toggle around to a couple of different radar sites. But again, it is that tornado warning that has been issued for parts of Carroll County and to Columbiana County. That's one of the reasons why you're joining us here on Facebook Live uh, as well. And this will continue to press off toward the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. Let me overlay the radar for you. I think that's a product that you're a lot more familiar with in terms of looking at. And what we look for is that little notch. Do you see it right there? It is just west of Ohio State Route 644. I'm going to circle it for you real quick and show you kind of the direction at which it's moving. This is what I'm most concerned about right here, and it's moving again toward the northeast about 15 miles per hour, and it's a good little signature on there too. And that's one of the reasons why, again, if you're joining me from the eastern fringes of Carroll County, a great time to just be weather aware. Let me get hyper local with this and show you exactly where it is. We're going to get down to street level here to show you where this could be impacting. This would be along Nickel Road, Ocean Drive Northeast, Avon Road Northeast, and it looks to me that that is a uh, Trush Road and Spade Road Northeast. That would be the area right now where there could perhaps be that potential for a tornado. Again, no confirmations from the National Weather Service just yet. We're in what's called an NWS chat with them where we go back and forth to kind of see what they're seeing, what we're seeing, and vice versa. At this point, I'm not seeing any confirmed reports of tornadoes on the ground, thank goodness. However, again, our radar indicating that there has been movement and a lot of rotation in that system, and so it's one of the reasons why uh, we're you know marking this as something to be concerned about. But if you're joining me around, say, Ohio State, Route 39 there, again, heading toward the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. Keep in mind that in this part of Carroll County and heading into Columbiana County, thank goodness it's not very densely populated, but either way, though, our friends and family certainly still live there, so it's one of those uh, it was one of those situations where we just want to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe and free from harm. You'll notice that as our radar scanned right over that storm, there's a lot of pink in there just indicating that there's a lot of torrential rain. Notice its movement. It's moving relatively quick at about 15 miles per hour. So it'll, it'll really kind of get its energy and kind of get going toward the northeast. But it's that little area right here, that little nugget, if you will, south of the, the, the main area of the storm. This would be, by the way, where the heaviest of the rain and where some embedded uh, larger hail could be. I'll look at the hail perimeter in just a moment. But again, this is moving out of Carroll County into Columbiana County with a whole lot of lightning. Stay inside until the storm has passed. And better yet, stay, if you have a basement, stay inside, get to your basement, get to your safe spot. Again, you're hearing that tornado warning siren going off in parts of eastern Carroll County and then into Columbiana County with this severe thunderstorm that we're tracking. Notice the breadth of this system as well. It is expansive, just meaning that out ahead of it in parts of center. Uh, Glenmore, I think that as of this point, I don't think that the, the, the possible rotational element will impact you. It looks like it's moving generally a little bit more east and northeast. So Glenmore, I'm not all that concerned for you. However, either way, notice that there is that little uh, core of red, which would indicate torrential rain that we're tracking as well. So as I mentioned before, let me just see what the hail parameter in here looks like. One of the reasons why you'll notice that severe thunderstorm warning has been extended, by the way, is either due to <clears throat> strong damaging winds over 58 to 60 miles per hour or if there were hail present and I'm going to remove the radar just for a quick moment and you'll notice that in parts of Carroll County and this is when we broke in on Facebook live to kind of keep you updated on what's going on notice that our hail size is about in just under two inches in diameter so yes, there's going to be a lot of melting with that hail as it falls from the base of the thunderstorm and meets the ground. But the thing is, is that I don't expect all of that inch point nine size hail to completely evaporate before hitting the ground. And so again, large hail would certainly be something to be concerned of. You want to bring the cars inside. Uh, you want to bring them underneath that carport or into the garage if you're joining me out ahead of the system. Thank goodness again for my friends in parts of uh, Carroll County 
uh, as we speak, it looks like the, the, the breadth of this system has moved out of the county line and is into Columbiana County. But either way, though, uh, as we track this out of the county, it's certainly something to be aware of. And what I want to do real quick as well is just kind of give you a, a, a overall view of what we're seeing because there's a couple more storms behind that. Could they contain rotation? Absolutely. I think that'll be a little bit more isolated. Thank goodness. But on the southern end of Tuscarawas County, if you're joining me around Janaid and Hutton area, just south of Janaid and Hutton, you'll see where all of that lightning is. Let me just show you how much we're actually tracking for you, about 37 lightning strikes within the past 15 minutes. And then on the southern end there of Carroll County towards Sherrodsville, see another, another little thunderstorm. That one not as severe as the one toward the eastern fringes. And again, great news here. This has officially moved out of our viewing area, which is, uh, which is again, great news for us here in northeast Ohio. But if you're going to be perhaps taking that drive, I know it's a weekend where a lot of folks are going to be out and at them. Um, perhaps in some of the lesser densely populated communities in Northeast Ohio, given the fact that it's a three day Labor Day weekend, a lot of folks just kind of like to get out of the city. And unfortunately, towards Salineville, right along Ohio State Route 39, is where we're seeing that signature, at least, of where uh, a tornado could be. It's literally called a hook echo signature. And you're seeing that hooking right here. And notice that the National Weather Service has just issued another warning. It looks like that would be another tornado warning that would extend close to Glenmore. I think it would, it's just north of Glenmore. It would include Ohio State Route 30. So if this is a familiar area for you, this would be a great time to reach out to friends and family that might not be, you know, as in tune with what's going on. If they're outside at a barbecue or if they're just kind of enjoying their Sunday evening, they might not be aware of this. So a great time to just give them a quick heads up and say, hey, listen, there could be a tornado heading in your direction, certainly a severe thunderstorm at the very least. It's a great time to get inside, and if you have that safe spot to go to, we typically suggest either a basement that's best. A lot of folks don't have basements. I completely understand. I'm actually one of those folks. So where do you go? Into an interior room of your home away from windows because, again, that is the safest spot to be. And, of course, if you can perhaps even get under something, especially if you're joining me around, say, Salineville, right along Ohio State Route 39, that would be the best place to be. I'm going to expand the view real quick since this is technically out of our viewing area, but I do want to show you there were a, uh, a line of storms heading into some of our western fringe counties. So real quick, let's take a quick jump on over to this is going to be over toward Bucyrus. It's heavy showers. It's a couple of heavier thunderstorms as well. This will be making its way, generally speaking, into Richland and Ashland County. Let me give you a quick timeline just so that you know exactly when this is going to be in your neck of the woods. Um, in parts of, say, Mansfield and then down toward Loudonville as well. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a, uh, a radar loop over the past hour and it's moved about 33 miles within the past hour, meaning that it's moving at about 33 to 35 miles per hour and the direction would generally just be straight east. So at let's say 35 miles per hour this would then bring the rain and the thunderstorms thank goodness nothing severe right into 71 and perhaps i want to expand this out by about an hour just to kind of give you some lead time on this the uh heavier showers and thunderstorms would head into mansfield at about 737 740 ish frederickstown about 743 ashland at about 750 to 755 lagrange 815 and then grafton at about 820. so again not out of the woods just yet all of this by the way is forming along a warm front that's just toward our south and that's kind of what's igniting a few of these showers and thunderstorms um, that we're seeing right now. Nothing in Cleveland to speak of, nothing really in Akron to speak of, perhaps some light rain going to be moving into Wadsworth and moving into Barberton, nothing more than just some sprinkles, certainly not severe weather as of the current moment. For my friends in Lake County, Geauga County, Ashtabula County, nothing severe. Some heavier showers is what it looks like over toward Andover. Nothing to be concerned of. In fact, just south of Dorset and north of Cherry Valley, not seeing anything severe. It's just some moderate, perhaps at times some embedded rain. The severe weather that we're tracking for you this evening is, uh, thank goodness, out of Carroll County. And notice, here's where Carroll County is. I'm going to loop this over the past hour. And you'll see that this was kind of a quick developing storm system, by the way, where 
Carroll County, it doesn't include Carroll County, thank goodness, but just southeast of east is where it began and where we saw that little hook echo signature, which would be an indication that we have winds that are turbulent enough to perhaps create a tornado. And still, even though it's out of our viewing area towards Salineville, I want to focus in on that one more time because that is a very healthy signature of a heavy shower and thunderstorm capable of producing that tornado and it would literally be right over Salineville. So let me get into that real quick and see what I just kind of see since we have you on Facebook Live, we have all the time in the world to talk about this. And then of course after this I want to talk more about our hurricane because that's really going to be stealing the weather headlines over the next couple of days. But for us locally though, you'll notice where that little hook echo signature is. And man, that is a good, impressive signature as well. That is, uh, and I'm gonna circle it for you just so you can see what I'm seeing. I'm gonna get the arrow off of there. So here's where the, the signature itself is. Just uh, north of Salineville, what we were, the information that we had before was that it was moving toward the northeast, generally speaking, at about 15 miles per hour. And as of the current moment, let's see where that would take it. It would take it over Ohio State Route 64, perhaps. Again, this is, thank goodness, not a very densely populated area. So the, the communities here are smaller communities, but either way, right along Ohio State Route 518, Ohio State Route 11, Ohio State Route 45, it's torrential rain. It is lots of lightning. This is going to be a loud system as it moves through. In fact, the number of lightning strikes within the past 10 minutes up to about 57 lightning strikes. We mentioned this before as well that when we were looking at our hail parameter, uh, that was fairly impressive. This is what's called vertically integrated liquid. This can sometimes give us an idea on where some hail is. It certainly gives us a good idea on where the heaviest of the rainfall is. And those shades of pink from 160 or 164 over toward Ohio State Route 518, torrential, torrential rain in here with a ton of lightning. Could that contain some small hail? Absolutely. We measured before this storm had almost two inch diameter hail. I think a lot of it's going to melt. That's the good news before reaching the ground since air temperatures are in the 70s. That's going to be falling though. I think we'll fall and bottom out in the mid 60s. Either way, let me see what the hail core in here would look like as well. So I'm going to remove that. And this is what our this is what it looked like before as it was heading out of Carroll County and then over the county line. Notice the hail sizes again, larger than an inch and a half to nearly two inches. So that's perhaps what you would want to be prepared for. And you know, hail can do quite a bit of damage, unfortunately. Let me loop this and show you generally the trajectory of the hail core. So this is the general trajectory of the hail core. Let me put our radar back on. And that follows suit with where the heaviest of the rain is right now. Thank goodness, again, out of our viewing area. Looks like the National Weather Service has allowed that tornado warning to expire. Let me dial in with them just for a quick second to see what they are talking about. Again, as we broke on here to uh, Facebook Live, we were also talking about that area of ro weak rotation. They noted that as well, and it looked a little bit more persistent. They had pictures. I'll see if I can perhaps get a picture from our, uh, our website as well, but that showed a pretty distinct wall cloud out of that is what the National Weather Service is saying. So again, something that we're going to keep an eye on throughout the evening. Again, that's out of our viewing area, so it's not going to be a huge concern for us anymore as it heads towards the Pennsylvania state line. Just a quick recap on what else we're tracking and, uh, and then I want to kind of jump into Dorian because obviously uh, Dorian is one thing that a lot of us are, are you know, extra conscious of right now because it is such a large, massive system. So real quick, just to recap what's going on in Northeast Ohio, tracking some heavier showers and thunderstorms over Richland or heading into Richland and Ashland County, Mansfield, right along 71. It's going to be a soaker within the next half an hour to an hour or so. Down toward Millersburg, seeing a weaker line of heavier showers and thunderstorms uh, moving generally toward the Northeast. So heads up if you're joining me from Worcester in Wayne County, I think that'll probably move in within the next half an hour or so. Hopefully things begin to fizzle and fade. Unfortunately, as you know, the sun is going down a whole lot earlier. So right around the eight o'clock hour now is when sunset is. 
And once we see sunset, we'll see a lot of that energy that's helping to fuel some of these storms really begin to dissipate. So heads up if you're joining me from Worcester and Wayne County for some heavier showers and thunderstorms down toward Tuscarawas County on the eastern end of the county. Looks like some more storms are firing up as well right along the county line heading into uh, Carroll County. We'll watch for that given the history of severe thunderstorms in that area, given the history of rotation. I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on that to see whether or not we see any more rotation development or if any other severe thunderstorms develop. So I say that to say when we jump into Dorian, which I want to do right now, if I hear the little chime in my weather center of a severe thunderstorm warning, we're going to immediately break from Dorian coverage and jump right back into what's going on locally. So let me just make sure that my alarm here is on, which it is. And I want to invite you, if you're joining me on our Facebook Live page, to... Leave questions because if you have any questions about, you know, where Dorian is headed, maybe you have Labor Day plans or friends or family that live down in Florida and you want to know what's going on, feel free to leave that in the comments section. I'll make sure to check that here momentarily. But as of the six o'clock advisory, Hurricane Dorian had winds of 185 miles per hour. To put that into perspective for you, speaking about tornadoes, since we just had a tornado warning, it is equivalent to an EF4 tornado in terms of the winds. And keep in mind, too, this is a massive system. Dorian is nearly the size of the state of Ohio, and it is moving toward the west at only about 5 to maybe 10 miles per hour, so basically a snail's pace. Here's the type of destruction that we're talking about with a Category 5 storm. We measure this on what's called the Saffir Simpson scale. It is a wind scale scale for us that helps us determine the intensity of a hurricane. It doesn't get any higher than a category five storm. So this is the most catastrophic in terms of damage. Most of the damage that we're seeing right now is in the Bahamas. As you know, the capital of the Bahamas is NASA. Thank goodness it's occurring north of that. But real quick, this is the type of damage that we're expecting is a whole lot of storm surge upwards of 20 to 25 feet. That washes away bridges. That washes away homes out off their foundation. That can wash away trees, shrubbery, grass even. There's a whole lot of damage that water can do. And another quick note is that water and flooding, by the way, is the number one killer worldwide out of any natural disaster. Disaster. So unfortunately, with the population center in this area and in the metro area of Freeport of about 55,000 people, unfortunately, with the strongest storm that they've ever experienced since record keeping began in the northern Bahama Islands. Again, unfortunately, I think that casualties will happen. This is a loop, by the way, over the past six hours as it made landfall over toward Marsh Harbor. Again, this is the one of the northern areas and northern islands. It's comprised, by the way, the, Bahama, the Bahamas of about 700 islands. So there's a ton of small little islands in here, as you can see. But again, this is generally heading over or towards, say, Sweden K. And it is so well defined. That is really a hallmark of this system. You'll notice the eye wall. This is where the most intense winds are. So that 185 mile per hour wind with wind gusts, by the way, over 220 miles per hour. That was measured not only by hurricane, our Hurricane Hunter aircraft, which actually kind of dive into the storm. They measure the barometric pressure. The lower the pressure, the stronger the storm, the stronger the winds, the more intense the hurricane. So all of this is raised toward the west and again about five miles per hour as of the six o'clock update here's the information moving west at five miles per hour so it is just slowly creeping along imagine yourself stuck in traffic here in northeast ohio on like i-77 and your foot is just barely off the brake and you're just kind of inching along that is how quickly this massive dangerous catastrophic hurricane is moving so unfortunately given the fact that this is churning over the islands at such a slow pace it is like a lawnmower i am expecting to see lots of reports of downed trees power lines not by the tens and hundreds but by the thousands and i think that power is going to 
obviously be out not only for days, but perhaps even weeks and months. This is worst case scenario for our friends in the northern Bahama Islands. Again, moving toward the west at five miles per hour. So let me put that track on there for you. We're expecting it to maintain category five status, which means winds at 156 miles per hour or greater, not only through the night tonight, but through the morning hours tomorrow on Labor Day, Labor Day afternoon, and it won't be until Labor Day evening by Monday night into early Tuesday that we that we finally may see a weaker storm and still only at one mile per hour by 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning winds at 155 miles per hour. Again, as we mentioned, category five status is is 156 miles per hour or greater. So even into Tuesday, it could still be a category five storm. So friends and family down that way have got to watch out for it. Obviously, if you've had any cruise or vacations that were planned down around the Bahamas, it is an absolute no go. I wouldn't be surprised if Carnival, Royal Caribbean and all the other cruise lines that sail to the Bahamas have canceled just about canceled or rerouted just about every ship away from here because again, it is just that serious. All right, let's take this out a little bit further and I want to make sure that we we get this correct. So what you're looking at is the official track from the National Hurricane Center right here. And although the official track of Hurricane Dorian is just off the shoreline and just off the coast of the eastern end of Florida, it's not off the coast by that much. I was doing some geeky measurements earlier this evening, and it's about 45 miles off the coast of Florida. And I want you to keep this in mind as well, that the hurricane force winds extend about 45 miles out from the center or the eye of Dorian. So we could very well still be talking about hurricane force winds. Those are winds in excess of 74 to 75 miles per hour, perhaps touching the coastline. So from Fort Lauderdale, Florida toward West Palm Beach, the current system, Dorian is about 170 to 175 miles east of West Palm Beach. Again, moving toward the west at about five miles per hour. So it's going to take its gingerly time and sweet time getting there. But by Tuesday afternoon, that's when it's going to start to make a really close approach to the U.S. mainland. And notice what we call the cone of uncertainty. That means that the forecast track could deviate. And no, if you've been tracking this with us over the past, say, week now, we've seen deviations. You might remember earlier in the week that the track was initially taking it over Orlando and possibly interacting with the Gulf of Mexico. And again, that was because of the cone of uncertainty. And it's the cone of uncertainty that also suggests that, again, if this pivots any more toward the west, it would absolutely bring it as a powerful category four hurricane making landfall in the eastern end of Florida. That could happen. Now we're expecting it to stay over over the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean by only about 40 to 45 miles. So we're hoping that happens so that we don't see damage like we're seeing in the Bahamas uh, on our east coastline. But either way, if you have friends, again, from Fort Lauderdale up towards, say, the Kennedy Space Center, even Orlando, although Orlando is fairly landlocked, still needs to kind of be on guard and watching this very carefully. And then up the coastline we go, St. Augustine, America's first city, up towards Jacksonville and Jackson Beach, Florida, where our chief meteorologist Betsy Kling is right now. We're reporting for our sister station and helping them out. We're thinking that by early to midweek, we'll see some interactions along the coastline. Obviously, like huge waves expected. Rip currents are going to be a huge issue. Erosion is going to be a problem. We're going to see a ton of rain along the eastern fringes of the east end of Florida and the coastline there as well. And then it's going to continue its track. And notice it's kind of following the U.S. coastline. And as a category three storm with winds at about 120 miles per hour, it'll make that curve, or at least that's what we're expecting as of this point. Notice again where that cone of uncertainty is. It could interact with Savannah, beautiful area, Tybee Island area before moving into South Carolina and then eventually the coastal regions of North Carolina. Here's a better perspective for you. Could it make landfall in the United States and the Carolinas? Absolutely, that's a possibility. But as of this point, notice that it's staying just offshore and we're really hoping that that 
forecast trend verifies because the, as long as it is offshore, that means that the core or the eye of the storm, which is the most intense part, would not interact with the U.S. mainland. Unfortunately, that is what's happening down toward the northern end of the Bahamas. So again, I'm going to run, out, run back over to my computer, feel more than free to leave some questions. If you're wondering where to go, you can always add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, or on Instagram. I do want to recap, though, what's going on locally uh, and see if we're seeing any more severe thunderstorms. I haven't heard the chime in the weather center that would indicate that, so I think that most of us are clear. But just to kind of go back and double check what's going on locally, um, Again, still tracking those heavier showers and those thunderstorms moving into Richland and Ashland County. At this point, we call this stratiform rain, so I don't expect to see any severe weather in here, which is good news. Obviously, there's some thunderstorms from Bucyrus moving towards Shelby. You'll see some heavy rain in Shelby, but I think that our severe weather threat is going to be minimal. And again, as that sun begins to set within the next half an hour, I don't think that severe weather is going to be a huge issue for us. But again, some heavier thunderstorms just north of uh, Millersburg toward the city of Ripley and Holmesville, seeing some heavier rain locally, and then down around uh, parts of Carroll County, Tuscarawas County, the southern and eastern end of the county line, seeing some heavier showers and storms. And thank goodness, it looks to me as if the National Weather Service has allowed for that severe thunderstorm warning to expire. Again, here's where that tornado warning was at one point. I'm going to mark it here on my map right here. And so we'll, we'll get confirmation here on whether or not there was uh, any sort of uh, damage that was done. I'll be calling around and having our producers do the same thing just to double check. But looks like the, the severe thunderstorm warning has been expired, um, which is good news. But we're keeping a close eye on things, at least uh, in that area. All right, let me jump back toward Dorian real quick. Um, I'm going to jump on my, my Facebook page and our Facebook Live page here. If you have any questions about it, I do want to make sure that um, that we're talking about that and that we're answering your questions as well. So I'm going to head on over to the WKYC Facebook page here in just a moment and jump online and see what, uh, what questions that you might have. Again, just a couple of interesting statistics for you is that, um, again, this is the most powerful hurricane to ever interact with the northern Bahama Islands. So it is just, it, it is absolutely one of those things where it is a historic uh, sort of uh, situation. All right, so I'm looking at some of the comments here um, on this video and some folks, Bruce Phillips just saying, hey, in Willard, we're seeing some lightning. We're hearing some thunder as well. Uh, Judy Hayes is joining us from Australia. Hope that the weather down there, down under is a whole lot better for you, Julie, than uh, what we're seeing here. Um, and let me just kind of click through some of these comments. And yeah, I, I'm not seeing a whole lot. Uh, for some reason, it's not opening up all 44 of the comments for one reason or another. My computer might be acting up on me uh, real quick. But either way, though, either way, let me just run through it one last time, and then I'll let you get back to what you were doing before. But again, here's what we're tracking. It is Hurricane Dorian. Let me see if the National Weather Service has any other updates, or the uh, National Hurricane Center, by the way, has any more updates. What they're doing is phenomenal at... Um, down there in South Florida, that's generally where the uh, National Hurricane Center is. So not only are they providing us with uh, updates every three hours, but at times what they're doing is actually providing us with updates to the updates. And so the latest update is for 8 p.m. So they're releasing it about 10 minutes early. So this is hot off the press. Let me tell you what we're seeing again this is hot off the press. I don't even know if our system has updated this um, as of this point, but the location is about 75 miles east of Freeport. That's Grand Bahama. Let me show you where Freeport is. And again, Freeport, heavily, heavily populated. And to my estimation, that's a great estimation. So they're sitting about 75 miles, and that's exactly what I'm seeing too. So that is a really populated area, obviously a really popular cruise port as well. And it looks like the clouds are just now rolling into Freeport. 
and eventually, unfortunately, the strong winds right behind that. Let me put the winds on here and show you what those winds are going to look like toward Freeport. So from the north, and what ends up happening in places like Freeport, when you have a really intense hurricane that moves on shore and sends all that wind and all that water into these little inlets, that unfortunately leads to a ton of storm surge and flooding. And notice how this is shaped too, kind of like a bowl, right? Do you see that toward Freeport? Unfortunately, I would expect the coastal areas of Freeport right here on this little peninsula to be absolutely inundated with flooding. I think that's going to be a huge concern as Dorian moves closer toward Freeport. Wow, that's really concerning because now that I'm looking at it, I didn't realize that it had that kind of conve or that concave, that concavity to it. And that's just going to hold on to us to so much water. And so storm surge is going to be a very big issue coming out of Freeport. And I'm sure that there's news crews um, from NBC that are probably in that area. I know that we have some folks that are uh, stationed in the Bahamas, but that's going to be a huge problem. Already toward High Rock, if you've ever been there before, to the Bahama Islands. Um, again, this is, this is just a, a worst-case scenario. Boy, oh boy, we're looking at sweet, sweeting K. And sweeting K right now is, uh, again, this is just an absolute life-threatening situation. I'm going to uh, put on some statistics here. We said it's at 185 miles per hour. So where is that 185 miles per hour located, you might be asking? That's going to be where the eye wall of Hurricane Dorian is. The strongest of the winds, the strongest of the winds with Dorian are generally like right here. Here's where the eye is. Believe it or not, in the eye of Hurricane Dorian, when that eye passes over, literally it goes from 185 mile per hour winds moving in a northerly direction, and then the eye wall moves over, and it's almost like uh, I've never been in the eye wall, but from what I understand, it is almost like the heavens just open up, right? The sun comes out, the wind is really peaceful, it is very calm in the center of Dorian. And then unfortunately, when that center of circulation moves over, it is the back edge of that system that then moves over with 185 mile per hour winds in the other direction. So imagine what will happen in Sweden K is first, what we'll see is a ton of storm surge, and they're seeing that right now ongoing catastrophic flooding as we are here talking on our Facebook Live page towards Sweden K and some of these inlets and islands. This is going to pass over Sweden K. It is then going to become calm and peaceful, and then unfortunately, as the back edge of that storm system moves on through, everything is going to be in a reverse. So we're going to then see water pile up on the west coast of Sweden K, and storm surge is going to be an absolute a catastrophic problem on this end of that island as well, or of that, uh, that K area. So that is one of the reasons why storm surge is such a huge problem. And that's not even to mention the, again, 185 mile per hour winds. That is so impressive. Uh, I have a couple of really cool statistics, by the way, on this storm. I posted them on Twitter for you because sometimes I kind of feel like, I feel like, you know, you, you don't really get the, the gravity of this situation until you are able to kind of compare it against something else, right? So let me tell you a couple of the statistics that I pulled um, off this storm from earlier. So again, as we mentioned, Hurricane Dorian's 185 mile per hour winds, that is equivalent to an EF4 tornado. The tornado scale, by the way, is called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. It only goes up to a Category 5 in terms of the EF scale. As you know, tornadoes can actually be a lot more obviously compact than a hurricane, but can have much stronger winds. But even at an EF4, that can level homes. I've actually seen EF4 damage with my own eyes before. And literally, homes wiped off foundations, 
trees completely leveled and it is it almost looks like a bomb went off for lack of a better analogy it looks literally like a bomb went off when you see ef4 damage and it's just everything is leveled and unfortunately that's the type of winds that we're talking about immediately surrounding the eye wall of hurricane dorian so as we said before the the eye of this storm is going to come within, we're estimating and kind of guesstimating as of this time, within about 45 miles of the US mainland. So hurricane force winds, and let me, I'm gonna head back to my computer and actually show you how far 45 miles is. Um, but hurricane force winds are like 74 to 75 miles per hour or greater. So that's gonna get really close to uh, touching the United States coastline. All right, so here's where the center of Dorian is. Let's go out 45 miles. So here's roughly 45 miles. And I'm gonna actually do this in all directions because if I do it in all directions, what you'll notice then is how far, if it lets me, uh, how far these hurricane force winds extend around the eye wall of this system. So here's generally speaking, I'm gonna make a big circle around this too, by the way, just to kind of give you, and this is again, obviously not to scale, but generally speaking, hurricane force winds with Dorian extend 45 miles from the center of circulation. So already Sweden K and you know, Freeport, what they're most likely experiencing right now in Freeport is a lot of cloud cover. They're certainly feeling those gusty winds, but then it is basically then going to, uh, to, to pick up in terms of tropical depression winds, and then we get to tropical storm force winds. So here's where that tropical storm force winds would be, that just under 74 miles per hour. And then as this section of the storm moves closer toward Freeport, that would then be hurricane force winds. We're talking category one storm force winds, and then it gradually increases to category five. So it would be like category one storm uh, winds category two, category three, category four, and then immediately surrounding the eye of Dorian would be category five, which is at this point at 185 miles per hour in terms of the winds. And that just is so impressive. I had another statistic for you as well that I thought was really interesting. If you're, if you're still on, then you're certainly a weather geek and you probably want this type of stuff. But I was looking at it before and what I saw was that the last time, let me see where I can pull it up. It's on my Twitter page. I was tweeting all this stuff out. So the last time we saw hurricane winds this strong in the Atlantic was with Hurricane Wilma. You might remember Wilma, that was back in 2005. And here's another really interesting tidbit is if Dorian strengthens, which it absolutely has the possibility of doing, I think maybe one of the reasons why we could see a little bit of weakening would be because there's so much land that, or a, there's a little bit of land that it's going to interact with. I think that it'll actually go at, at, in its current trajectory, it's gonna just go due west. And so there's gonna be a lot of land interaction with this. So that might help to break it up a little bit. But here's what I was gonna say. Should this increase, all right, should the winds increase from 185 to 190 miles per hour, that then would tie it with the strongest winds ever, ever recorded in a hurricane since, or an Atlantic-based hurricane, since Hurricane Allen, that was back in 1980, so nearly 35 to 40 years ago. But if there's any little, uh, you know, a shred of good news here. And again, it's, it's hard for me to even say that because obviously the last thing you want is for this to move over land, especially populated areas, but would be that should it interact with all of this land that you can see right here, we pray that that would lessen the intensity of this storm system. I, I have very little confidence in that, unfortunately, and it looks like the National Hurricane Center is kind of on par with that as well, given the fact that we're expecting it to be a category five. I mean, if, if we could be 
just a smidge optimistic. Maybe it would be on a lower end of a Category 5 if the winds begin to kind of get uh, torn apart because of the land that it'll, it'll interact with. And unfortunately, too, with Dorian, it's moving over the Bahamas. And unlike, say, Haiti or the Dominican Republic, which has huge mountains to tear apart the storm, the Bahamas really, if you've been to the Bahamas, I mean, it's, it's pretty flat, you know? So there's not huge mountains to really help to tear this thing apart. Again, that, that's very unfortunate. So it, it is one of those things that we'll certainly be watching this very carefully. All right, one last time, I'm going to just check to see if I can get into some of these Facebook comments, um, and then I'll, I'll let you guys get, get on with your, uh, with your Saturday evening. But certainly wanted to at least spend a little bit of time on this because I know that a lot of folks... Are, are very concerned with what exactly is going on with Dorian. So let me see if I can click in one more time, get to some of these comments, and, uh, and answer any of the questions that you might have about, uh, about Dorian. So um, just friends just kind of mentioning, this was right off the top when we were talking about the storms in Wayne County. Folks just kind of want to know what's going on locally. Um, and I'll, I'll get you back to a local look at what we're, what we're tracking for you in just a moment. I mean, if I could get these comments to pull up, boy, that'd be real helpful. Jeez Louise. Um, all right, yeah, it's, it's not working. All right, well, either way, though, either way, I'll, one last little recap on what's going on here, and then I'll get you back to your... Uh, Get, get, you, get you back to your evening. But again, some heavy showers and thunderstorms, parts of uh, uh, Erie County, Huron, Richland, Ashland County. Looks like a little mezzolo is developing. That's a, a really geeky term that I'm using. It just means that it looks like there might be a little hint of, again, nothing severe whatsoever, but perhaps some gusty winds uh, in that part of this thunderstorm that's moving through, say, parts of Shelby. That would be in the northern and western end there of Richland County, nothing severe. So again, locally, good news, nothing severe to worry about. Just some heavier showers and thunderstorms, parts of Tuscarawas County and Carroll County. We'll watch that for you. Again, thanks again for hanging out with me right here on my Facebook Live page. You're on our WKYC main page right now. Um, I have a bunch of stuff that I'm doing just because I don't want to clutter the WKYC page with a bunch of geeky weather posts. You can always head to my Facebook page. That's Facebook Michael Estime and the little search tab that you can see up above. Also on Twitter, that's a great source because I can kind of tweet things out immediately from our weather computer. And then on Instagram as well. Thanks again for hanging out with us right here on Facebook Live. Again, if you have any questions about where Dorian is heading, if that perhaps is going to impact your travel plans or any of your family that might live down there, give me a shout and I'll do my best to get back to you. Hope that you have a great night. Hang out of those umbrellas. And if I don't see you beforehand, have an amazing Labor Day Monday. Tuesday looks amazing, by the way. Mid-80s and sunshine so a little something for you to look forward to. Looking forward to seeing you back here on Channel 3 News at 11 p.m. right here on WKYC.